We now welcome alongside Spencer the most decorated <laughs> entry in prize fighter history, James Tony. James, great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my British work. <laughs> <laughs> James, welcome to the UK. Hey man, thanks for having me. I'm, I am enjoying myself. Now we'll we'll talk your career first before we talk prize we fighter. <laughs> We're gonna go there. Now you came on the scene. You broke my heart when you beat my man Michael Nunn. And man, you just, you, you man, made yeah. it so easy. No, it wasn't easy. Man. The guy was a classic boxer, just like yourself, you know what I'm saying? Uh, by the way, you were probably one of the best boxers in the crew division history. Wow. You hear that, that Johnny? Yeah, but still, Michael, but Michael Love was a great boxer, and he had got me on my game plan, and I lost control for the first five rounds. But after the, after five rounds, I got to get out, hitting, cracking, and eh, eh. And you know, I took, I took him to school. You went into this fight as the underdog. As well. one. Did that bother you? You were yeah. unbeaten. I was mad. Besides him making, you know, telling jokes and doing what he had to do with me, it really angered me. So you know, I was willing to take care of my business. And he was a great fighter, Michael. Oh, like I said, everybody, everybody who I fought in the '90s, early '90s, late '90s, they were all with fighters. I fought Murder's Row. I fought fights that, that, that couldn't last a day. We, we, Tim, we were, you were my era, you know, so obviously we're going to keep an eye on you over the other side of the war, and you mm. were just flying through the yeah, division. You were making life easy. I had to. But first, you know, like I said, I had to, my goal was to become the heavyweight champion of the world and become the first man to come from the middleweight division to the heavyweight division and do that. I did. And we had Eubank and, and, and Ben and... Yeah, yeah, I had clowns. You guys had clowns. Um, <laughs> um, you never liked them much, did you? <laughs> no, you know, you know what, basically, you know, I'm not hating on, hating on those guys. They were good fighters. They respect that over here. But we, 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 in America, when they start talking about them, I didn't like that. So I had, this one, I had to try to do something about it. It never happened, but it was my fault. I remember there was a chat show, they had Chris Eubank on, oh, they yeah. had Nigel Ben on, you popped up on screen, and yeah. it was like you put the fear of God into him when you came on talking hard. It was, uh, me, me, it was me and Mickey Rourke, and um, it was actually Mickey Rourke and Tennant, so it was me and I, 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 had, to, I had to try to get him in the ring. I told about the mama, try to do everything, but it didn't work. So that was calculated. You ended up, by, you ended up fighting um, Aaron Barkley for yeah, the Super Millet. the Blade, yeah. Yeah, I had to fight him, and um, that was easy. Another top, top boy. He was tough. Yeah. He was tough because he had beaten my old time here, and that, that, that was payback. Do you, do you think, because, you, you, again, you were putting with all the top top draw fighters, do you think they were trying to get rid of you, shut you out? No, but you know what? I See, this one thing, I never ran from that. I wanted it. Because if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I said I'm the best fighter in the world, I have to prove it. Mm -hmm. I mean, fighting the best fighters in the world. I, did, I fought everybody at middleweight, at super middleweight, at the heavyweight. At Creedway, and even here as a heavyweight, I'm fighting some of the best fighters in the world. I fought Sam Peters, John Ruiz, See, Crossy and Rodman. The crazy thing, I used to watch James watch, you know, as I was growing up, as I was, you know, a young kid, 11, 12, oh my space. God. this man <laughs> was world champion. Now, my career's been gone, and he's still boxing at the top. You know, that tells you the, 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 you know, the level of the man. He's a, he's a modern day great. Why did you go through the weights? Because, man, first of all, when I came back to boxing, I was 205 years as a back playing football. And I wanted to come back as a heavyweight, but they were like, no, you're too small, you're too small to be heavyweight. We're going to get your weight down, we're going to get your weight down. Uh, so I bought into that. And after so long, I was keeping trying to make that, that 154 as an amateur. I couldn't do it. I started going up after winning the title, going up, started making more money, going up. So far. And size wasn't an issue for you because you obviously you were you were small at middleweight, you were small yeah. at super middleweight. You went up to cruiserweight mm -hmm. uh, to watch Euro for the for the IBF title 2003. I was jumping at the time, yeah. so I was watching yeah. what what was going on. You Hard had the fight. speed, didn't you? Still got it. Still got it. Still got it. Ain't going Even away. now. Speed, speed ain't going away. What did you think of Jurov? Because, you know, I can remember me and this guy were training in the, in the gym at the same time mm -hmm. in, in, in Vegas, and I know it was tough, and I thought maybe we were top, the top two cruiserweights at the time, but you did this to him. I told him, I told him, I told him uh, months before, I said, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to tell you, but I, I'm going to get you. Was he tailor-made for you? 100%, because he stayed in front of me. Yeah, I had to chase him. 
And you see what happened? I bust him up, had his jaw broke up, swollen up, had his cheekbone swollen up, had his eyes swollen up. He took a, he took a, uh, a Detroit butt whooping that day, and, um, <laughs> and baby, I get credit, he, he hung in there. Do you think they all make the same mistake? And look, you look at the side of you, you think, you know what, this yeah. guy, they all, he they can't all, make too much. They all, they, they, they might say, oh, he old, he old. Okay. Think that, but the thing is, I'm a real fighter. I'm not, I'm not one of these pretend fighters or put together fighters that, that, that they have today. You won the world title against Shirov. Would you have beaten Johnny Nelson? Why would Easily. you put him in that position? Easily? Nah. <laughs> 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 Johnny Nelson it was, a good fight. It was a great fighter here in British, on British soil. If we came, from, if we came from the Atlantic Ocean, and we had to get it in, I had to, I had to, You'd have bite to be a down. fast runner, man. I had to, I had to bite down and catch him. <laughs> hey, set the trap for him. You'd have to be a fast runner, man. Your style, you, you have that rolling style. Oh, yeah. We see Floyd Mayweather doing it. Yeah. We see the younger fighters trying to get it through. You see, thinking he copied you or you copied him? Who? Excuse me, who? <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, when he... Who? When he it gives a, the roll shoulder style. Who copied who? <laughs> who copied who? He copied you. Who copied you? Were the original? I am, no, I'm not the original. The original person is as a child. So you should know that. As a child, just just walk out, you know, step back, bop, bop, you know, come back. I took it from them. Now, meanwhile, for 12, 25 years, I've been doing that, but Floyd, he's been doing it for the last, what, 10 years? So, we go, there it is. But we've enjoyed it through the years. 25 years deep in the game, deep baby. Deep in the game and still with us <laughs> on a recent Gloves Are Off. Going nowhere. James Tony was a hot topic. I'm in Great Britain, baby. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. So I might just live here. Super middleweight? Mm -hmm. Probably James Tony. Yeah. And that, I was going to say, he's the one that we're all, everyone's I, missed out here. I James think, Tony yeah. in that era. Oh, mate, he was probably. I think James the most talented fighter of all of us here. I think he was the most talented fighter of all of us here. Talented, and actually, he had more talented. ability than anybody here. No, I don't think I think maybe it's Desire. I think maybe it's Desire could have caught him. You don't agree with that? I thought he great. I'm really, you spanked him. You beat him. You beat him. You beat him. You beat him. I spanked him. How did he going to be as equally talented as me? Are you serious? As easy as I beat him? I could have beat him while playing chuckles on the other side. That's how easy that was. And he better than us? Are you serious, James Tony? Who's that? <laughs> now, you look at the people sat around that table. Uh, uh, Roy Jones, Chris Eubank, uh, Richie Woodall, St uh, Steve Conn. Oh, Roy they, Jones? They, yeah, they, <laughs> they were singing your praises, apart from Roy, of course. Roy, yeah, see, that was Roy talking like, like, he, like he tough. No, he ain't. Man, boy, you better go back to Pensacola and chase your chickens. <laughs> Could you find the rematch with that Even now? Man, man, Roy don't want this. He be, he be talking. All, all he, what he just did on uh, a little teaser right there, it was the act. Well, that's it for another episode of Gloves and Gloves. Thank you for Hello there, welcome to another episode of Ringside Extra for SkySports.com where we bring you exclusive content from our Ringside guest. Today we're joined by Spencer Oliver and alongside him, former three-weight world champion, James <laughs> oh, Lights really? Out Tony. <laughs> what, has he got something wrong there? You've, you've, you've been saying, <laughs> no, been saying off-camera... Look at what, look at my record. Your 12th time. Check my record, man. Look at my, look at my, look at my little dossier there. You'll see, the, you see all the times I've won. World titles that I've won in six different divisions. Now you know what? I'm, I'm... <laughs> Are you a six-time world champion? Twelve. What, what, what is this? I'm a twelve-time world champion in six divisions. But you know what, Johnny? You can't provoke me. <laughs> don't, don't provoke me, Johnny. You know what? You know, look, look. <laughs> I'm already mad at my pops. Okay. Well, listen, guys. He's I got this from the pops. Oh, hungry. Now your partner right there, he probably the other side. <laughs> slap, slap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going this way right. and that way. Let me ask a question. You, you two, you two, both fought from the '80s, and you could have even met in the ring in the, no, in the cruiserweight. Wait, no, well, he didn't fly. That's a good thing. Let's 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 get to good questions. We'll talk about you this had your own thing. patches. Yeah, he didn't fly. James, after yeah. 25 years as a professional, yeah, you'd never boxed in England. You almost fought Michael Watson. Michael Why has it taken you so long to fight in England? I guess the British people didn't like me enough. Oh, they liked you, right? Uh, I've been trying. You know, I've been, it's, it's been. It's, you know, I was I was to come over here. 
I've had, I've had fun over here, but I always wanted to bring the fans to let them see what a real world champion is like. But it, it never happened until now. Was it the fear of flying, or was it because Ben and Eubank and that, that lot didn't come over and fight you well, on your home pass? Basically, that's the most important thing. That I hate to fly, and so uh, that's probably one of the key reasons. But I would have came over after Murray was right. After Murray was right, I came over here and fought, and I came out and went home. Because <laughs> it would be easy. Because back then, I was middle, everybody knew I was, I was the, the middleweight terror. Nigel Bank, Chris Eubank, easy. <clears throat> easy, easy, no problem. But, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not dog, I'm not dog them out. They were great fighters. They fought pretty great in the Let's in, not in forget the, Michael Watson as well. Michael Watson, and Michael Watson was a great was, talent. Uh, Michael Watson was, 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 a, was a big talent. Maybe he, the best, maybe the best. He Nigel might, he Chris might, always well, he might, he might have been, cause, but like I said, I never seen him fight. I just heard how tough he was, you know what I'm saying? But me, I'll fight anybody. And since this day, I'll fight anybody anytime me where all they gotta do is pay me and don't delay me. And you did, Michael Nunn, Iron Bart, Roy Jones. If you, if, you look, if you look at my record, I fought the best of the best. Every, every division I've been in, including now, I fought Sam Pierce, hit the heavyweight. I fought Sam Pierce, Hussein Rodman, John Ruiz. Keep on going. Holyfield. If Holyfield, let's keep going. There's a big British clash going on uh, in February between Tyson Fury and yeah. David Hay. How do you see that going, and would you be interested in fighting oh, the winner? See, having to make it, that would be perfect. It'd be like, I think when I left, that first good fight, um, David Hay gonna knock my man out, because the guy, Tyson Fury, he can't even spell fight. I don't <laughs> know, you know, I mean, yeah, the British people, yeah, they have done a good job building this guy's career record up. He's fought nobody. You know what I'm saying? But hey, it is what it is. But David Hay, he proved himself he's been around a lot longer. He should knock him out within three or four, three or four rounds. You've had nearly 90 fights. Why <clears throat> carry on now? And you love it. Yep, I love it. I love it. It's, it's, still in my, it's still in my blood. Passion. So you're here for prize fighter. I'm here for prize fighter. The tournament. What are we going to see? Lights out. In all your fights? Lights out. Hey, I let you blame me paid. Spencer, you're a big fan of this game. Mm, do, you be, do you believe you'll back up the balls come Listen, if fight, you, fight tonight? If you look at the lineup, you know, the lineup, you've got to say that James Tony's a heavy, heavy favourite. You look at what he's done in his career, winning so many world titles. And yeah, of course, you've got to go for that. I mean, I spoke to James before, before we started this show today, I saw him out, out in the um, lobby and we were speaking. I said to him, listen, do you know the format? He said, don't care about the format. Do you know how many rounds we're fighting? Don't care about how many rounds we're fighting. Didn't even know the setup really to prize fight. You know, it tells you the confidence of the man coming over here. He just come over here to do a job and um, it's going to be exciting. I think it's by far the biggest name we've seen mm. in any well, prize fighter in history. It's good for fight fans, isn't it? Absolutely. Just to finally get to, to have a little bit. Adam, the fight fans, you know, the, the fight fans, the British public love, you know, people like James Tony. He's a, he's a modern day great. If you look down the history, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? So, you know, to, to get to see him in a prize fighter, I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. Scott Sports going to love it. OK, let's go back in history. You're a Detroit fighter. A lot of decent, outs in Michigan, a lot of outstanding fighters have come from well, there. Floyd Mayweather. If you, look at, if, you look at the, if you look at the boxing history, all the greatest fighters in boxing come from where? The state of Michigan. Ray Robinson, the greatest of all time. Tommy Heron. Somebody named James Tony. Why? 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 What is it? What is it? It's in our culture. It's the bloodline. Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart was a great trainer. Mm -hmm. but he wouldn't need best trainer. Who would you say was the best? Bill Miller. Bill Miller, mm -hmm. he, 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 Bill Miller was the head trainer of Crump. But Emmanuel Stewart just got the credit for it. Bill Miller, Ben Logan. And what was, it, what was it that was so special about the fighters from, from <clears throat> that area, James? We, was it the hunger? Was it the way you were matched yeah, early on? No, no. You see, you see, there you go with the matching stuff, see? The matching is today. Back then, even my man Jay in here was getting matched with killers. But you got to have, you got you to you have right here to bring out, to bring it out you. I, 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 I've seen some footage of you on YouTube uh, sparring with Jeremy McLaren. Mm. Some serious terror. Oh man, that, terror. that was, was, man. Was, it, was, was that Was that just how it was? Every day was like a dog fight in the trunk, gym. Yeah, it was either kill or be killed. That's the way it should be today, but these 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 fighters they're built like cupcakes. Why didn't you stick with Stewart? Why didn't you stick with Emmanuel Stewart? <laughs> Who? Why didn't you stick with Emmanuel Stewart? I want to see, I want to see number one. Everybody, I never was with Emmanuel Stewart. I was Johnny A. Smith. 
you know, and then I got, then I got with Jackie. And man, was, she told everybody, he gave me the jacket. He didn't give me no, he didn't give me nobody, he had me in the first place. And man was scared death of me. You know, because he knew I'd put it on him. And I, and I told him, I, I told him, I told him, every time I see, every time I saw my man, I said, every time I see you, I'm gonna whoop every single one of your crown fighters. I did that. So let's go back in history even further. Jersey Joe Walcott, uh, people like oh, that. You, they, they, they had a star that you emulated, I, that we see Floyd all, Mayweather emulating. That's all, well, see, Bill Miller, Bill Miller, once again, the head, the head, the original head trainer of Crunk Jim. Well, he became a trainer early, early in my career, and he was as a child. And um, every day he talk, he sat me down and said, watch these tapes. I watched this Archie Moore as a child, Jersey Joe Walcott. Albert Chucky right. Mm. Show us, yeah. that's show, us show us it. Show us a bit of the shoulder. Come and, on. We wanna see it. Uh, I don't wanna I don't wanna show off some more stuff. <laughs> see, we, 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 show we, me we, the shoulder roll. You, see, <laughs> you can you come in like this? I'm trying to fight. You got back off, man. Don't don't, don't follow me. Pick up your mic. Pick up your mic. <laughs> let, let, let's do this. So I'm throwing this jab. Stand back, Spencer. Don't hit yeah. me. <laughs> don't hit me, man. I'm too old. I'm, not, uh, I'm throwing, uh, I'm throwing uh, the jab. The shoulder see, roll. Tell me why see, it works, why it's not big. See, I got I come here. Well, I'm trying to pop. So the shoulder will slip under the shot. Pop. See, see, I come in. We're throwing the shots. You do a jab, right? Yeah. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Bam. See. One. Bam. And it's a star that a lot of the a lot of the the, the youngsters are trying to pick up. Mm -hmm. I try. I try to They've got to understand why they're doing it, not just do but, it. But but see, think that, that's the point. They're not understanding why. They're just trying to do it, and then. Me, me and cause mistake. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of people think that Floyd Mayweather invented that style, no. the, the shoulder roll. They, 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 they kissing his butt. Everybody know the real. Everybody know who boxing. They know the real. J N. They all. Everybody know who, who really did it. If you if you look at what takes back from 1991, even more for Mark was doing it. Mm. What about today's era of heavyweights? Terrible. Uh, terrible. <laughs> so who's going to come through? Deontay Wilder? James Horn. James Torres? <coughs> James Horn. I'm, I'm, You're going to come again? That's a Wilder. Why, why, why would you say someone horrible like that? That's horrible. <laughs> were, were you ever offered the opportunity to, buy, to fight any of the Kalichkos? Because they've, they've dominated the heavyweight division for... See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even see... They, they've been doing me for 10 years. They've been 10 years. Even, I was, even while I was WBA heavyweight champion, I'd be heavyweight champion. They didn't want to give me, they didn't want to give me opportunity, but I don't care. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. If I was like a the real name, but I'm not gonna say because I know it's a free, you know, real TV, TV. But these guys are, they, they, they absolute cowards, both of them. He's our best guess. Yeah, I, I love this yeah, guy. They, they <laughs> tell me, tell me about Deontay Wilder and the, the, uh, the another, future heavyweights uh, coming. Uh, who? Uh, who? You know I'm talking about Deontay. They kid you. They kid you. Show me on TV. What's the kid name? Anthony me? Joshua. Who? Anthony Joshua, they he'll be him. Right, he'll be him right now. Joshua beat Wilder. He'll be him right now. Have you not seen his record? Are you not impressed with his me? record? Deontay Wilder's record? Have you seen my record? <laughs> so, so why aren't America producing the great heavyweights like they did? You know, back to the Tyson days and we'll, before that, Larry Holmes we'll see, we'll see, and the great see, 70s see, lot. We're, 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 we're one great heavyweight, that's me. And the reason why we're not producing a little great heavyweight like the old school days, the old school days are gone. They try, everybody trying to make a quick buck. And Jay, Jay knows that. And um, I think, if they, but then again, I have a young heavyweight by the name of Rajvan Shigami, Kajana, excuse me. He's coming up, he's undefeated. He's not people here though. He might fight your boy one day in a big fight, who knows? You're talking about the old school, yeah. you know, the old school style has gone now. The old school trainers have gone. So when you finally hang up the gloves from boxing, no, no what, you're not going to pass it on? There's no more old school trainers left. Someone's going to pass yeah, on the, 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 the skills. You know yeah. why? Because these kids don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to, know, to learn it. They, everybody going in, they see, they see the flash, the, 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 the junk these guys doing today, the they didn't come like that. They love the fame instead yeah. of the game. Yeah. Spencer, so, you think James could offer? A lot to the sport? Absolutely. Yeah. Of course he could. Look at I the, the, the patience. history in a man. I ain't got no patience. I ain't got no patience. Man, my patience is like this. Lights out. So unless you, if you train the fighter, he'd have to have the same mentality as you. No nonsense, get in there. Bulldog, pit bull, right while 
<laughs> go to work, man. <laughs> You know, no play, no nonsense. Box every day, like little box every day. I like to box every day. Okay, in an ideal world, you I could choose any heavyweight in the world to fight right now, today. Who would it be? Damn. Any heavyweight. Yeah. Just, just to prove that I'm right, I was like, the Klitsch girls. It hurt me to say real name, but you know. Anyone. The Klitsch girls. The Klitsch girls. You know, I want to say, I, I, I want to say the real name, but I can't say it. If you saw a young James Tony coming through now, what would your advice be from the, the slightly older James Tony? I want to tell him because you, you couldn't tell him. A twenty-one-year-old James Tony was, was, was bulldogging everybody, was rockballing everybody. I didn't care. I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't say nothing to him because we'd be up scrapping or shooting each other. You gave him some great fights. Yeah, until, until somebody had a gun or something like that. Any regrets? And yeah, I have one regret that I didn't prepare myself for the Roy Jones fight. Because if I, if I were prepared for that fight, you would never talk, y'all would never heard from Roy Jones again. That's the only regret I have. Why, why do we never see a rematch? It wasn't me. It, def it definitely ain't me, because we Even now? Fight. Even. It, it's too late now. Too, you know, they, they, they called me Papa two weeks ago and them all the world fighting, and it's, you know, they playing they playing games. So I ain't, I ain't I'm just, hey, I'll fight when I'm eighty years old. I want the rematch. He's like, he's like, I want to fight Bernard. I still, I still, I, I'm with Bernard at halfway, and I'm, I knock him out too. He's talking about Bernard Hopkins yeah. beating him halfway. Of course, why not? Why not? How, how old was Bernard now? He's 40, 49. What, 49 years of age. Right, but it, it, so he's still got a few hey, years Bernard, left there, James. Bernard, hold on, look. Bernard could have fought me 10 years ago, but he did a smart thing. He saved his life. He went and signed with Bernard um, with Golden Boy, and they became partners. Mm. Bernard could have fought me when, when he was the, when I was the middleweight champion, he was the number contender. I fought Barkley, made more money. I won't go fight. I won't go stay for but I to make one point five million dollars. Well, for Barkley, I made three. Mm. How do you remember James? Huh? So I remember him first. I told you I was I was a, I was a schoolboy. I was thirteen years of age. I remember him boxing Michael Nunn, destroying Michael Nunn, who was at the time pound for pound, you know, up there in the top four or five in the world. So I think that you remember him as as an inspiration. You got to, and I think that every kid around that time <laughs> did. And, um, and, and credit to him now, he's still going. I can't believe we've got him over here in the prize fight. It's just unbelievable. Finally, James, how long are you going to carry on? Well, I'm going to retire my mind, become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, which will, be like, which will probably be within the next 18 months. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy right now, but watch what I tell you. What well, what's the interest, Johnny, eh? And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to retire with a fighter here in Great Britain at Wimbledon Arena at the Wimbledon Stadium against Johnny U.S. Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. Nelson. Right. It never happened and never will. <laughs> That's all for Inside Extra this week. Next Thursday we'll be at the York Hall to see James in action for Prize Fighter UK v. USA. USA! <laughs> USA! Four in the USA! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> what? <laughs>